All right, guys, in today's video, you're going to see us take my turbo five cylinder swapped Ford Fairmont station wagon to the track, and it went way faster than I was expecting. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with these engines, they are part of the Atlas series of engines. These engines were sort of a modular inline platform that GM came out in the early 2000s, and they came in a four, five, and a six cylinder configuration. They were designed to share as many parts across the line as possible and this right here is the middle child. Now there's this funny thing called the middle child syndrome. Middle children often feel neglected or overlooked, leading to traits like independence and rebellion. I think we found our middle child. If you guys have been following the channel for a while, you know that we kind of have always said that we probably won't ever do anything with the five cylinder, but recently we decided to give the middle child a little bit of love, and boy am I glad that we did. Because like so many other middle childs, this engine turned out to be quite the rebellious attention seeker, and I'm very impressed with it. The last time that you saw this car, we were just doing some burnouts on the street, but based on our seat of the pants dyno, I was guessing the car was making around 500 wheel horsepower. So we decided to just run the car down the track in that configuration, just to feel the car out, make sure it wasn't gonna do anything stupid. So without further ado, let's get on to some racing action at Maple Grove Raceway. takeaways from that pass. First off, my seat of the pants dyno, dead on. Second, we're seeing a little bit of oil pressure dive off of the starting line, which is something that I was worried about. We didn't put any baffling in this pan, so it's possible that the oil is running away from the pickup tube. It's not too bad though, so for the next pass we turned up the boost a bit. But before that, a brief discussion on dyno tuning and torque converters. Now in our most recent showing of this engine, you saw us swap it into the car to replace its older brother, the inline six. And we mentioned that our horsepower goal was to break 600 horsepower at the wheels because we wanted to make more than the Audi five cylinder rally program ever did with their engine program. Now, logically you would think that the next time that you saw this engine, it would be at the dyno but we decided to skip that because that torque converter that we just welded some lug nuts to isn't really great at showing horsepower numbers on the dyno. Now, a torque converter is something that can be tuned for many different uses, and the torque converter that is in this car is set up for the racetrack. And because of that, it's a little bit looser, it definitely likes to couple at a higher RPM, and it's very much tuned to the horsepower and weight of the vehicle. The dyno that we use is designed to simulate a load for a car that is much heavier than this car. But it's not great at simulating the particular scenario where this engine is going to operate at most of the time. Many of the fast race car guys will actually have two different different torque converters for their car. Uh, usually they make a stator change to the torque converter and when they are on the dyno they will use something that is tighter and when they're on the track they will use something that is looser. Now this is a fine science and you'll see them making changes frequently but I didn't want to drop the transmission in and out of this car. 
a billion times. So we decided to take the car to one of our favorite races of the year, Race for the House over at Maple Grove Raceway. goal did we make 600 wheel horsepower with this thing did we beat the alley rally car program well based on the weight of this vehicle and the trap speed at the end of the quarter mile we did it pretty healthily in fact by my math this engine is making 720 wheel horsepower and now you guys understand my comments about the neglected middle child this thing really showed us what it had, and frankly, I think we have a proud dad moment right here. So the last time you took this car out, Nate ran 893 at 153 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And you pulled a bigger engine out and put a smaller engine in. Mm -hmm. Convince me that was a good idea. <laughs> I mean, we're get, getting pretty close to our uh, six cylinder performance numbers. Is the six cylinder bad or is the five cylinder good? I don't know. Maybe we need to step up our game on the six cylinders. So what you're telling me is that the six cylinder Atlas engine is better than an LS. Mm -hmm. And now you're trying to convince me that the five cylinder is better than the six cylinder. Yep. How many times did you hit your head? I don't know. You raised me. Well, I only dropped you twice mm -hmm. a week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bye. See ya. We have a few adjustments that we need to make to this car. First off, we need to get the engine making consistent oil pressure throughout the entire run. As I mentioned earlier in the video, we had a few issues where the oil pressure was dipping at the launch. Basically all of first gear, the oil pressure was a little bit low. So we plan to reinstall the oil accumulator on this thing. There are also numerous uh, chassis tweaks that we can make on this car. Frankly, this car was making a lot more torque off of the line than we were expecting. And it was planning the tire probably a lot harder than what was required. So we will likely do a four link change as well as uh, trying to tie the front end down a little bit with our adjustable front shocks. So there's still a lot to be gained on the chassis side, but next time out, maybe we'll go for an eight.
Okay, did we do it? Did we do it? I hit the rev limiter, both gears, but, and I hit the rev limiter going through the traps. So, yeah. I just love hitting the red limiter, don't I, guys? Ugh. It's just my thing, huh? Noticed that the oil pressure off the line was quite a bit better on this pass. I reinstalled my oil accumulator underneath of the hood and that seems to have solved our issue. For the next pass we decided to sneak a little bit more boost into it and dad suggested that I leave at a slightly higher RPM. Would that be enough to get this 211 cubic inch engine into the 8s? Let's find out. get on them a little hard so shoot did come out a little nicer that time though that was a little airy
Overall, I'm extremely impressed with this five cylinder. For a 211 cubic inch engine, this thing's kind of crazy. We're making over four horsepower per cubic inch with this thing and we're not even running that much boost on the thing. If we think about this from a pressure ratio standpoint, we're running this engine at under three to one pressure ratio. Now, usually this means that the engine should make three times the amount of horsepower that it does naturally aspirated, assuming there are no losses. And the fact that we're at four horsepower per cubic inch means that this engine is quite a potent combo. This engine still has the stock camshafts, which are right around 175 degrees duration at 50. And all that's really done in the head and valve train department is the head was ported by our friends over at Snyder Performance. So what do you guys think? Why do you think this thing is such a strong performer? Is it the dual plenum intake manifold from our friends over at MW Steel? Links in the description if you are interested in one. Big thanks to them. Is it the fact that we have an abundance of exhaust flow with our 75 88 millimeter turbo? Is it the intercooler, which is probably good for like 2000 horsepower? Is it all the time that we spent on our cold air intake? Or is this thing just really that impressive? Leave a comment down below. Let me know what your opinion is. If you enjoyed today's video, we would really appreciate it if you shared it with your friends. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one. Okay, there we go. That worked. Uh, oh. And go buy a t-shirt.